Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the Sherbidium depleting molten salt reactor design. Now, this reactor will deplete a single highly enriched Sherbidium fuel rod in 4 minutes and it takes a total of 12 fuel rods. It also runs 13 industrial steam turbines producing over 51 MHz per second of power. So yeah, I'm gonna cover the design and maybe you can turn the entire thing into a cool looking base like this. So without any further ado, my guys, let's get straight into it. Alright, so here's an overview of the whole build. It takes a total area of 3x3 chunks and is divided into multiple parts like the reactors, turbines, substations, pen fuel pool drums and even sherbidium production from uranium which I will cover at the very end, just as a basic. Now, in order to make the reactor itself, you will need every pressurized water reactor part there is. So we start by coming to the reactor area to the very middle and make a square of 3x3 using the pressure vessel. Now in the middle, place down 4 neutron reflectors and surrounding them, place down 2 more pressure vessels on each side. And with that done, our base is made. Now come up by one block and place down a neutron source. Surrounding the neutron source will be control rods and in front of the control rods will be more fuel rods. So basically four fuel rods on each level, there will be three levels. Now this is important. Make sure to surround each fuel rod on all of the sides, all of the six sides using control rods. As this is a sherbidium build, we want that once all of the control rods are down, the reactor should be shut down completely. Now to close off all of the neutron path, place down reflectors on the entire perimeter like this wherever there is an intersection of fuel rod. Now once again come up by 2 using the neutron source, place down 4 more control rods, no sorry 4 more fuel rods and surround them with control rods on all of the sides like this. And once again place down 4 more fuel rods, this is a third and final level and come up by 2 more like this and surround all of the fuel rods once again with control rods on all of the 6 sides and close off all of the neutron path using reflectors like this and once that's done it should start looking something like this now we close off the top just like we did on the bottom place down four reflectors and in the middle place down pressure vessel so basically the top and the bottom will match each other and this right now is a symmetric looking build like this now we place down the coolant channel and the heat exchangers for power production and getting the heat out so in the very middle, place down two coolant channels and two heat exchangers. On the top now, we are going to completely fill it up using heat exchangers. So make sure to fill them up like I am doing in the video here. And leave no gap because the more coolant channels and heat exchangers you have, the more heat you can get out of the reactor. So basically, once you fill up the entire upper section like this it's now time to start working on the bottom section and this one will be filled with coolant channels so they will be in equal numbers on the top and on the bottom and make sure to make it completely symmetric leave no block left basically so right now the reactor is done on the outside, break one of the reflectors in the middle, place down the controller and place down two ports touching the coolant channels. And now we are ready to close the reactor up using pressure vessels. So go side by side, leaving no block open and place down the pressure vessels like this. Reflectors are counted as casing blocks, so they don't need any pressure vessels on top of them. But any other thing, it will require pressure vessels and once you right click with an empty hand, the reactor will form. So in order to test this reactor now, I'm going to set up a heat exchanger with a creative Stirling engine. Now we are going to cool this reactor using liquid sodium. So the heat exchanger is set to process hot liquid sodium and the reactor itself will take in liquid sodium. Now connect the heat exchanger with the reactor itself and now we are going to fill up the reactor with liquid sodium. Now liquid sodium is amazing at getting heat out like it is very efficient. That is why I'm using this in the build. So creative stalling engine set. I'm going to place down highly and with sherbidium but as you can see reaction doesn't start because we haven't pulled out our control rods yet. So once I pull out the control rods by 100% the reaction will start. It will quickly go up and for the core it will reach the critical level thus indicated by the light on the top and we will start producing power 
over 25 million thermal units and 51 million HEs per second or mega HEs per second. And as you can see, the fuel rod is depleting quite fast. So in one minute, it will deplete by 25%. That's why in four minutes, it will deplete completely, as long as the reactor is full of fuel rods, that is. Now, if I shut this reactor down by basically putting all of the control rods back in, then the reaction will stop completely, just like how it was in the start. So basically, this reactor is safe in that respect when it comes to RBMKs especially. Now I'm going to replace the Creative Stirling engine with a boiler. So the amount of steam that this reactor or basically the boiler is going to produce, it will be equivalent to what 13 industrial steam turbines can process. You can use the Leviathan, but they have reduced efficiency. So in total, 13 turbines, six on each side, basically two rows of six and one in the very middle. And now I'm going to pull out all of the pipes, connect them to the boiler. And here goes our steam setup. And I have paired these turbines up in order to get the low pressure steam out. All of the low pressure steam will be processed by two big cooling towers. So connecting the water and the low pressure steam. By the way, this step is important. You will need a buffer in the middle. So make a biggest tank, fill it up completely with water. And uh, yeah, you will need this buffer. For some reason, it is not working without the buffer. So make sure to place the tank and place it in the buffer mode, the input output mode, and then connect it to the cooling tower and the boiler. Now, once we have supplied the boiler, our biggest tank is a little bit empty and it should work just fine. Now, in order to get the power out from all of the turbines, I'm going to pair them up using three substations. And finally, we'll place two more substations on each side in order to pair up the last turbine. You can do this basically however you want to do it. And once all of the connection is done, our steam setup is actually complete. So in order to test this, I'm once again going to pull out all of the control rods and we should start producing the power that we were getting with the Creative Stirling engine. So right now, looking at the power setup, we are getting over 51 megahertz per second, basically what we are getting with the Creative Stirling engine. Now a brief overlook of Sherbidium production from Uranium. So this can be done using the Sherbidium transmutation device. You can use conveyor belts in order to automate the entire process. So Uranium ingot will be dropped in the transmutation device. You will need any capacitor, the red coil or the euphemium one. And in order to basically prevent the capacitor from ejecting make sure you set up the correct filters for all of the ejectors once the capacitor is in the device then the uranium will take 5 mega HG and it will be converted into uranium now this can then go in an ore acidizer where it will be converted into its crystal form the crystal will be processed in a centrifuge which will give us sherbidium uranium and plutonium now sherbidium here is the main ingredient as it can be used to make more fuel rods for our pressurized water reactor or the molten salt reactor as we have made and uh, yeah, the depletion of highly enriched sherbidium is what gives us euphemium. So basically you can get euphemium from uranium. That's pretty neat. Here we have the hot depleted fuel, which can be cooled down in a spent fuel pool drum. And as I told you, the depleted one will give selenium, lead, and also euphemium, which I guess most of you want. Now selenium in itself can be used to make highly enriched selenium 327 fuel which is even more powerful than sherbidium and when it depletes it also gives euphemium and also australium so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did do press that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out and stay safe